Oh, thank you, Terry. You bless us with your music and your, the words of them. Ah, yes. And no, yes, I do know, because there's something that's going to be just, this is so perfect. You know, because at the beginning of the year, I really did not know this lady. None of us did. And now, these few short months later, she is so close to our heart. My pleasure to introduce to you our minister, our beloved Reverend Kath. Well, good morning. Happy Easter, whatever that means to you. It's all good. It's all okay, right? <laughs> Anyone uh, feel, ever feel a little stretched? <laughs> or maybe like your life has just gotten out of control? <laughs> or feel like it's just over the top? Or maybe you feel like some surges of energy and power? Anyone ever feel like that? Yes. Well, you're not alone. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with you. It's part of spring. You know, it's something is happening in us as well. You know, we're one with this, with nature. So along with everything that's going on in nature, it's going on in us as well. So, um, you know, we used to think that trees and, and plants were dead in the winter. They kind of, they look that way, right? And yet there's something so magnificent going on beneath the scenes, behind the scenes. You know, they are resting, they are recuperating, they are regenerating, they are getting ready for that bloom, that burst of flowers and see, you know, the, the leaves. And that takes a lot of time and preparation. You know, we kind of go through the, that cycle that, uh, of life, that cycle of the year, that cycle of n nature. We have our time in the winter. We might hibernate a little bit. I know I like to sleep a little bit more, get like a bear in a cave, you know. Things are a little quieter. And, you know, there's a resting, there's a recouping, there's a regenerating, there's a recreation going on within us. And then there's this burst. So what you're feeling is very normal and very natural. So no, no alarm. So, you know, we do this. This is really happening once a year in an exaggerated form. But it's really happening on a regular basis as well. You know, we do this every time we, you know, turn inward. And we're, you know, consciously thinking about, you know, the things that we want or doing our spiritual practices in order to create outwardly. And so we're putting those mental and spiritual energies, you know, we're, we're working with them. They're working with us. We're setting an intention of what we want to create. And indeed, there is an upheaval as that seed that we planted in our minds is breaking through the surface. Sometimes it feels like we're breaking through ground, right? <laughs> you know, and we just have to hang on because it's just, it, 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 it's just part of it, you know, that, but, but really when we think about it, something that was invisible before is breaking into form. It's breaking into the visible. And so um, with that transition that's going on and with the demonstration of something that we've created in our minds, with that coming into form, we are also transformed. We are transformed. We are coming forth the next iteration of ourselves. So we may have thought that the experience of uh, having a th the thing that we desired, you know, was about that. But it is really about us. You know, in reality, we are transformed in the process. So meet the new you. <laughs> Say hello to the new you today. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Give yourself a hug. <laughs> 
You know, if we could only remember this, I try to remember this, especially every spring, because it seems like there's a little bit more challenge going on. Life is like, you know, encouraging me to grow and to, to, you know, to become more. It's helpful to know this, it really is. It's the creative process itself. So looking more closely at the creative process, you know, it helps to know that we all have this really cool feature that we come into this physical body with. You know, because we exist in this universal field of mind, which is everything, which is all, the minute we make any kind of definitive statement, declaration, you know, say something, you know, say we require something, the minute that we do that, whatever we said ceases to be just our own personal business. It is broadcast everywhere. It becomes universally known. So sharing the one mind that we do, what is known at one place is known at all places at the same time. Whether someone is tuned into it or not is another thing. But we really have access to so much information that we have no idea about. And each time we make a declaration or state a, a need or make an affirmation or do a, uh, an affirmative prayer or spiritual mind treatment, the creation of the very thing that we said begins to take form and that form is custom tailored to us. It's custom tailored to us. Someone else could have that same desire, set the same intention, and it's going to come out looking differently. Why? Because we are all unique representations of spirit, source, life, God, whatever you want to talk, call it. We are a unique representation of spirit. So we offer a point of attraction like no other. So things are going to look different. So while we may think that our statement that we said is coming from little old us for our, our, our ears only, it now has become a universal project. Did you know that? Acted upon by the entire universe. I mean, we really got to get this, don't we? <laughs> it's big. We kick off a process. And then, you know, it, spirit, life kicks in with more ideas, wisdom, guidance, next steps, and then works behind the scenes with whomever or whatever else is needed to bring that into form. We got to get in, out of this little picture that it's just our little life and we're doing this all by ourselves. This is a really cool feature that we come in with. Do you know that people, be, human beings have for as long as we've been coming into form as a human being, all of them have come in with this feature. All of the generations that are coming in after us, they all come in with this feature. Whether we know it or not, whether we can use it or not, is another thing. Isn't it great to know this? I know that a lot of you know this already, but it really is helpful to look at these again and again from new perspectives. So we aren't really playing with fire when we, you know, make a statement that's all, you know, broadcast everywhere, but we really are working with an immensely powerful creator. The creator of all is the creator in us. It's the creator in us. So can you see how knowing this and understanding this, practicing it, you know, can really make a difference as to whether someone leads a so-so life or an extraordinary life. Can you see that? You know? So I ran across a story that kind of exemplifies this in real life. Sometimes it's, I like stories because they just really help bring the point home. And I love to bring points home. <laughs> so this one, I, I like food too, so it's about a chef. And uh, his name is Daniel Hum, and he's a Swiss, Swiss chef. 
try to say that. I thought I had that down. <laughs> in his early 40s, he owned a restaurant in New York City called 11 Madison Park. And in 2010, his restaurant got an award for being one in 50 of the world's best restaurants. He's only 40. Now, not long after that, they received an award for being number one. Number one in the world. How did he accomplish that? Well, he not only believed in exceptionally delicious food, but along with that gracious service, gracious service, everything was done with great care and attention to detail, exquisite attention. They even set an, an intention for every new dish that they created. So can you see how much more delicious and satisfying this food could be? You know, how well fed his patrons really were with all that love and intention mixed in to the actual ingredients. Now, I don't know if he knows the creative process or not, but he is living it. He's exemplifying it. And that's all that matters, right? That's all that really matters. And he says, our best work comes when we really challenge each other. It's not always easy, but it made us unstoppable. That's quite an affirmation. Made us unstoppable. So weeks after they received their award for being number one, he closed down the restaurant. Now, why would he do that? So he, he quoted um, William de Kooning, the famous Dutch-American abstract expressionist who inspired him, and William said, I have to change to stay the same. So he said, I have to change to stay the same. And what he's really saying is, I too have to keep growing and expanding. I can't keep doing the same things that I've always done and expect different and better results. I have to up my game. And he knew that he couldn't rest on his laurels. He had to keep going, you know, expanding himself, pushing himself, the, you know, pushing the boundaries of himself and helping to do that with those around him as well. He said, it's easy to get to number one. It's a whole nother thing to stay number one. So he decided to create a, a whole better than ever menu and to have a whole new look to his restaurant that would reflect the new intention that he set. And one of the things that they did was is they took all the pots and pans and anything metal in the kitchen and they melted it down. I don't even know how you do that in the city. <laughs> they melted it down and they created a step that you could walk, you know, as a, a step going into the entrance of their new restaurant. So anyone walking into their restaurant into the new restaurant was walking over this very expensive step or looking very expensive looking step uh, in order to get into the new walking over the old to get into the new I, I just was so impressed and he said passion is not a hobby you know it's not something we just wish or like to have he said you have to be willing to suffer for it now, we don't believe in, in the science of mind teaching. We don't believe in suffering. But I believe what he's saying is, is that you have to be able to put your heart and soul into what you say that you want, you know? And, and there will always be things that we have to give up when we, you know, in order to, for us to keep the focus on what is most important to us. You just can't do it all. And I love this story because it is a beautiful example of someone emerged in the creative process, living on the cutting edge of what's possible. We need stories like this. 
We need stories like this to remind us to stay awake to the idea that we are living a precious life. You know, the potential that is waiting for us to be tapped into is, you know, beyond anything that we can imagine. And for us to be who we really came here to be. What we do affects everyone and everything. The way that we do things, you know, some of us are doers and we really want to get through the to-do list. I mean, I've had to change because of this teaching. It has transformed me. But it's still something you work on. You know, you want to get through the things. But it really is about the way that we're doing them. The to-do list will always be there. The minister that uh, I replaced years ago, the minister emeritus for us, Dr. Roy Graves, he, I guess he's showing up today. <laughs> uh, I wasn't planning on him showing up, but he did. Uh, he used to say, you know, I clean off my desk. I'm just trying to get, you know, clarity, and then stuff just keeps on coming. Well, I mean, that's just how it is, you know? So you really have to just slow it down by doing it the right way, doing things, taking the time, you know, to do things the, the right way. The success that we achieve, we achieve for everyone, not just ourselves. And the things that we rise above and get beyond, we do for all. Why? Because we're one. We're one. We are one. We are living the one life of spirit together. We are one. I don't think we have to go out and create a new restaurant. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe somebody does, wants to do that. That's not the point. But the questions that we have to ask ourselves are, what are we called to do? What are we called to do and how can we do it with greater passion and joy? How can we live our lives with more gusto? What if we really knew that we were invincible spirit incarnated into these bodies? Invincible spirit. What if we knew that we were backed? by the entire universe with every desire. You know, the universe, spirit, life, source, wants us to succeed. It wants us to enjoy the paradise that it has created and the opportunity for us that is here. Andrew Cohen, author of Evolutionary Enlightenment, writes, it needs us on this level of things to expand itself. It needs us on this level of things to expand itself. It needs us. We don't just need life or our higher self or source or whatever. It needs us to keep on going. In this thing called you, Ernest Holmes says, writes, you exist that the divine feeling, fire, imagination, and creativity may be expressed through you. You exist for that purpose, that that divine feeling, fire, imagination, and creativity may be expressed through you. That's a tall order, isn't it? <laughs> Some days taller than others. <laughs> Just like Chef Hum you know, we always have an opportunity, don't we, to create something new out of what was, out of our past, out of what was yesterday, and push the boundaries of what's possible. We have that opportunity all the time. We have to change to stay the same or to stay at the level that we're staying, the level that we are. Life really demands that we evolve, that we keep on evolving, that we stay in the game, you know, in order to thrive and, and be happy. And it's really about doing the little things with extreme love and care. You know, we don't have to worry about so much the big things. I, I can say a lot of the bigger things in my life have just really unfolded very perfectly and naturally as I focused on the things before me that I could do with great love and attention. So if we focus on things with greater love and intention, every, every possible moment that we can, every interaction that we can, you know, 
life is going to happen for, for us, through us, and around us, you know, if we continue to live in that way. Now, like the, the chef's restaurant, we can create here and in our lives, in our marriages, in our, in our families, in our neighborhoods, in the world. We can create a space, a sacred space. We can create a sacred container, an environment, a culture that really, you know, embraces th this idea that we can all live, play, work together, demonstrating results that support individual and collective growth and expansion. We can do that, continuously surpassing what has been, especially in regards to loving one another. We can do that. If we want to achieve the rewards of living an exceptional life, we must put it all on the table. We have to open our hearts. We have to let down our ego defenses. And as Ernest Holmes wrote, Apropos for today, be determined to roll away the stone from the tomb of the hidden self. Be determined to roll away the stone from the tomb of the hidden self. So I would like to close with a beautiful poem by Holly Holden I ran across years ago. And it's called, What Wants to Be Born in You, Beloved? So just kind of accept this for yourself. Take these words in, and then I'll move into a little treatment. What wants to be born in you, beloved? I have become grateful for the moments when I remember to stop in order to listen to what the earth has to tell me. This morning, it was a flower who took me by surprise and shared her secrets with me. She told me of her journey, how it began in darkness, in the quiet, cool embrace of the quiet, generous earth. She told me how the light called to her and how slowly but solidly she began to unfold towards the simple inevitability of her calling. She told me of the exquisite cracking open of all she knew herself to be, the opening that felt like death until she realized it was her birth. And then, with her open petals, she asked me in a way only a full-bloomed flower can ask. What wants to be born in you, beloved? What does the light want to call into being from the quiet, generous earth that waits patiently in the cave of your heart? So in closing, let's know this together that we are a part of something so much greater than we are aware or that we know. We are something so much more than we appear to be. We are a part of a glorious, a glorious process, a glorious divine plan that is unfolding beautifully and perfectly right here and right now in this room, in this center, in each and every one of us and in all everywhere. We celebrate our divinity, the divine, our divine self. We celebrate that which is born anew today. We are grateful for this opportunity to be alive, to be here, to be inspired to practice these ideas, to be in touch with our higher self, to know our oneness, with the infinite. All is truly well. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Source. Thank you, God. Thank you, Life. All is well, and so it is. Mm -hmm.